this, you know, you could be creating an emergency for someone. So one of the people who was sitting with us, one of the grandparents said, this was uh, June 28th. She said, it's 108 degrees today in Seattle where my three-year-old granddaughter lives. And that's 30 degrees above normal. Hello, my name is Stanley Heller. Welcome to The Struggle. We start with some good news. A fleet of ambulances was purchased for Gaza and made its way into Gaza. The group that sent the ambulances was Miles of Smiles. في قافلة أميال من الابتسامات نؤمن بأهمية العمل المشترك وتجميع الطاقات والإمكانيات لدى المؤسسات الإنسانية الداعمة للقضية الفلسطينية بكافة الأقطار وتتويجا لكافة الجهود الرامية لدعم القطاع الصحي قامت قافلة أميال من الابتسامات بالتعاون مع جمعية الإغاثة الطبية الدولية ميديكس بتجهيز قافلة سيارات إسعاف يبلغ عددها 27 سيارة مجهزة بكامل التجهيزات الفنية مدعومة من مؤسسات إنسانية من أكثر من عشر دول بمختلف الأقطار استغرقت الاعداد لهذه القافله الشهور الطويله ابان طبعا الحرب الاخيره على قطاع غزه واستهداف الاحتلال الاسرائيلي الى الكوادر الطبيه والاسعافات مما اثر بشكل كبير على واقع العمل الصحي في قطاع غزه فمنذ تلك اللحظه وقافله اميال المتسمات بالتعاون مع جمعيه الاغاثه الطبيه الدوليه ميديكس وضعت نصب اعينها تسير هذه القافله فكان هناك تواصل من العديد من الدول والشركاء والمتبرعين من أكثر من 11 دولة And the Middle East Children's Alliance tells us that a new playground was built in the Gaza Strip. Climate news. The COP26, and COP stands for Conference of Parties, this 26th meeting of world leaders on climate is finished. Over 100 countries came together, and the rich countries made sure not much was done. Here's a short satire on, 20, on COP26, and it includes a vision of an alternative. I narrated the video for Promoting Enduring Peace. COP26 explained, satire leading to an alternative. The agreement established a clear consensus that all nations need to do much more immediately to prevent a catastrophic rise in global temperatures. Wow, what eloquent blah blah. Phase down 
unabated coal means they'll mine and burn abated coal. That's coal whose carbon is captured by a process that at this stage is imaginary. There's no need to spell out what to do for loss and damage. That's what the Almighty is for. Carbon emissions by the military don't need to be counted. F-35 exhaust is as sweet as baby's breath. Carbon offset trading will continue. We'll keep burning fossil fuels and pretend that planting saplings somewhere is an offset. It's capitalism at its finest. We've got to stop begging. There is an alternative to climate collapse. Good living for all, no smokestack energy or factory farms. Decolonize and rewild the land. Take over and abolish the fossil fuel industry. Ration fuel use. Preserve forests. Rewild land. Actually, most of that is not really satire. The facts about the 26 different cops are so grotesque. You know, it took 26 of these meetings before the words coal and fossil fuels would be included in the final statement. UN scientists are worrying about the end of human civilization and the rich countries are spending hours and hours with schemes for trading carbon offset credits. One of the supposed marks of progress of the COP26 is that due to the gravity of things, COP27 will be next year and not three years hence as is the normal pattern. But get where it will be held in Egypt, in an absolute police state, where in 2013, the military there shot to death about a thousand Egyptians who were staging a sit-in. You think the slightest meaningful protests of the COP27 will be allowed by the goon-run Egyptian state? At the start of COP26, the site Climate Action Tracker came out with a number of charts that showed starkly where things are and where they're going. It's a little complicated, so I'll break it down. Here's where we are now, 1.2 degrees centigrade above the average temperatures before the Industrial Revolution. This is the goal for the safe limit, 1.5 degrees. Above that, we're in for catastrophic climate collapse. This is what we'll get to if all the governments make good on their pledges for the year 2030. Not 1.5 degrees, but an estimated 2.4 degrees. And since governments are not making good on their pledges, the more re realistic number is that we're going to go up a ghastly 2.7 degrees. Some people are taking action, even if it seems to involve law-breaking. Here is an interview with climate activist Melinda Tuhus. I'll be speaking with Melinda Tuhus. She is a journalist and climate activist who wrote a piece recently for the New Haven Independent called Why We Rocked for Climate Justice. And in it, she talked about what she did and the trial that occurred in Wilmington, Delaware. Good morning. Good morning, Stan. 
So let's start at the beginning. Why did you go to Wilmington and what did you do there? So what we did in Wilmington was the culmination of a week long uh, walk that we did uh, from Scranton, which was Biden's you know, birthplace to Wilmington, which has been his longtime home. We didn't walk all the way, I have to say, that's a pretty long walk. Um, we actually prioritized meeting with people along the way who were fighting different fossil fuel and other environmental, environmentally uh, destructive projects. So we ended up doing a little more driving than we thought we were gonna do, but those meetings were really valuable. So we got to Wilmington and um, which is like corporate America, you know, Delaware is known for uh, being the headquarters of many, many corporations because of their, I guess it's their advantageous tax structure. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the big buildings there is the uh, JP Morgan Chase credit card headquarters. The main headquarters is in New York, but this was a very imposing building. Um, and so what we did was uh, carry rocking chairs, uh, 15 of us sat um, right next to each other along, you know, blocking the two double doors to the entrance. And we sat there for a while, actually uh, total, to be totally honest, I wasn't sitting there then, I was doing some other stuff out, uh, you know, a little further back from the building. But um, the police came and after a while they, they declined to arrest people. They said it was our uh, First Amendment right to gather there, even though it was clearly private property. And I guess Chase didn't want to have a scene there. So um, after a while, uh, folks went, took their rocking chairs and went into the street. And that's when I grabbed a rocking chair and sat in the street with them. Um, Why did you pick so Chase? We picked Chase because Chase is by far the biggest investor uh, globally in fossil fuel projects. Um, there's a report, uh, it came, I don't know if it comes out every year, there's a 2020 report and a 2021 report. Um, the 2020 report was called Banking on Climate, no, I forgot the exact name, uh, B Banking on Climate Change. And the 2021 report is called Banking on Climate Chaos. So um, there's very detailed uh, information about banks' investments in different sectors, uh, you know, like pipelines, like Arctic drilling, like mountaintop removal, coal mining. And um, overall, Chase is by far the number one investor, uh, multiple uh, $316 billion. Uh, wow, over 316 billion, that's a lot of change. So, I'm sorry. So, so you were talking that you moved, uh, or the people moved the rocking chairs uh, to the street. What, why did you pick rocking chairs as a? Uh, because we're elders. Uh huh. It it actually came up just organically while we were on our walk, and uh, we we gathered rocking chairs from various places. We had um, a guy with us who was just amazing, and he actually didn't walk. He drove his truck, his car, with a you know pulling the porta potty behind, and he had extra room on the little platform. And as we were going through Pennsylvania, he was finding places to get rocking chairs. It was very wow. funny. Some of them were actually beautiful pieces of furniture too. Huh. So um, anyway, that's what we did. So you're in the street with the rocking chairs. Was there also a banner uh, involved? Oh, man. yeah, we had several banners. Um, the biggest banner said uh, Biden and Chase. Uh, now you're going to make me. I can't remember exactly what it said. Do, it, it just said, I think, divest from fossil fuels. Um, and I think it was we a can pretty screen big share and find it. Let me see if I can do that without. Um, Yeah, there it is. Biden be bold. Is that the? That's the one. Yeah. Biden and Chase be bold. Uh, oh, there's stop. It's a little hard to read in yellow letters going down the left side. Biden be bold. Uh, stop. Chase, stop all oil and gas financing. 
So yeah. they were standing. Uh, there's a six foot pedestal there. And the, above them is a huge eagle with outspread wings that's standing in front of the building. And that's where they were standing. OK, I'm going to stop that chair. All right, here we are. So. Uh, so people got arrested. Yeah, the the police kept asking us, you know, to please move because. Um, you know, we could be preventing somebody from getting to the hospital or, you know, some some emergency. And there were two thing, two responses to that. One is that there was a left turn lane. And when anybody sat in their rocking chair in that lane, they were arrested immediately. So people couldn't go straight. Motorists couldn't go straight, but they could turn left, which, you know, was a slight inconvenience. Um, and they also said, you know, this, you know, you could be creating an emergency for someone. So one of the people who was sitting with us, one of the grandparents said, this was uh, June 28th. She said, it's 108 degrees today in Seattle where my three-year-old granddaughter lives. And that's 30 degrees above normal. So, you know, and we know that uh, 600 people died from the, the multi-day, you know, incredible heat in uh, British Columbia and, and uh, Oregon and Washington and a billion sea creatures died. So, um, you know, that was her response. Mm. <laughs> what we're doing is not quite as drastic as what's already happening and what we're trying to prevent. Did they arrest the people standing on the pedestal also? Yes. They did, okay. All right, so that was in, that was in uh, what date? June 28th. So that's at the end of June. And then the trial was in, uh, on the 12th of November. So it was very recent in Delaware. In Wilmington, right. Okay, so talk about the trial. Um, well, first I wanna say the trial was originally scheduled for September 29th. And so around that trial date, we actually uh, organized some amazing events. We did a, a walk from Chase Bank to Biden's house on the day before the trial and with many uh, young people who joined along the way. We went to different high schools and the, some teachers and a lot of students joined us. We had drummers, it was really exciting. Um, and then the next morning before the trial was supposed to happen, we gathered outside the, um, the courthouse and we held a People's Climate Tribunal. And we had a couple people well, several people uh, testified in person, including a doctor who talked about the um, health impacts from climate change. And I had done, because he couldn't be there in person, um, I had done a, a Zoom interview with, uh, in advance with Tony Ingrafia, who is uh, an engineer and on the faculty, he's emeritus on the faculty at um, Cornell University. And he's one of the world experts on methane. So we did an interview with him and we played it in front of the courthouse and it was very effective actually. Um, so anyway, we didn't have court that day. So then we had to go back for court. So what was your question? So November 12th was the trial. So describe the trial. So in preparation for the trial, we had, a, we had an arraignment with um, the judge, Judge uh, Carrie Taylor. And she was very thorough in, in explaining the situation and what our rights were. Um, 11 of us were pro se, meaning we defended ourselves. Um, two people um, were represented by a local attorney and we wanted to set it up that way because you know he knows a lot more about the courts in Wilmington than we do. Um, so, but the advantage, and, and the judge actually told us this, the advantage of being pro se is that you have a lot more leeway. You know, you're not expected to know how everything works and what the rules are and the laws and all that. So um, we were we were able to bring in a lot of information. It was it was very interesting. Our charge was we had one charge of disorderly conduct, which is a you know a misdemeanor. Um, and usually in a in a situation like that, all you can present is a defense trying to prove, no, we didn't sit in the street. No, we didn't block traffic. You know, no, we didn't, we weren't disorderly. Um, and anything else like to bring in anything about climate change or, you know, imp impacts that are already happening or concerns about future generations, 
would be immediately rolled out of order. So this judge, um, we had to present some information in advance about what we were going to do. So we said we were going to present some uh, expert witnesses and, um, and some uh, reports about climate change and about banks investments. And she didn't say, no, you can't. So I was still thinking up until we got into court that she was gonna tell us when court actually came into session, that's all irrelevant, but she didn't. So we got to testify to all this stuff. We had a different, um, a different doctor uh, testify very uh, extremely powerfully about you know, the impacts, already occurring impacts and future impacts of the climate crisis. Um, we had uh, actually two, I was, a t I was a witness and I was uh, interviewed by a, a, a fellow defendant and, and then that happened in another case too. So we were both defendants and lawyers. Um, which was really interesting, but you know, she let us do it. So um, I testified about uh, Tony and Graffia couldn't come and they wouldn't allow, um, you know, uh, out of court witnesses. They wouldn't allow people to testify, uh, you know, virtually, although they could have. I mean, cause we actually used the, you know, the videos to show some other things. Um, but, uh, so I testified about, you know, the IPCC, the report, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the new one that just came out a few months ago, very disturbing, uh, saying, you know, that human impact is clearly responsible for all the warming that's happened so far and, you know, what what's happening to our planet. Um, and then someone else testified, another defendant testified about the report uh, banking on climate chaos and showing how Chase was, I mean, all the, all the big banks are bad, but Chase is definitely the worst. So we got that into, you know, into the record. Um, and but then, then the, pro but the prosecutor kept hammering away that this was not, yeah. none of this was imminent harm. Can yeah, that's right. That? Yeah, it was really interesting. His role, the, the, the prosecutor was the arresting officer. He was a policeman. So, um, he kept asking everyone who was on the witness stand, including you know the doctor who testified, who wasn't at at the action. So he, what could he say? Um, and he kept asking me and the other defendant who took the stand, you know, how, what imminent uh, harm did you avoid by sitting in the street? And you know, we kept trying to answer it different ways. <laughs> um, and I mean, one thing I pointed out was, you know, the day of our action this heat wave was killing people. And if we didn't raise the issue, raise the volume and raise the awareness, you know, it was gonna keep happening. Um, so, so we finished our testimony and then the judge, you know, left the courtroom and we were all waiting outside for about an hour. And I thought, I, I didn't think, she, I didn't really think she was gonna find us not guilty, but I kept thinking, after everything we presented, how could she not find us not guilty? And it took an hour. So I'm thinking, well, maybe she's gonna find us not guilty. So we all filed back in and she starts reading her statement and made, immediately was made clear that she was finding us guilty. Then the interesting thing that happened was she asked the prosecutor, the police officer, uh, his, his opinion about what the sentence should be. Um, this was not something we could do jail time for. So it was just a question of, you know, doing a fine or possibly community service. Um, so he said he was recommending a $25 fine, which I guess was the minimum. Once you go to a trial, uh, that would be the minimum and no court costs. So she imposed the $25 fine and court costs. So it was $97 for each of us. Um, and on the way out, he actually, and actually out in the hallway, he talked to two different defendants and basically, you know, said he supported us. To see the complete interview, go to thestruggle.org and click to get to our new site and click on all our YouTube videos. News about the effort to preserve Remington Woods. 
Bridgeport, Connecticut's Zoning Commission met on the 16th and 17th, and for a total of six hours, they had heard solid public comments demanding the preservation of the woods. And the vote that was planned was put off. It was evident that the commissioners are not in favor of keeping the woods intact. One of them talked nastily about tree huggers. But where there's life, there's hope. I saw a meme on the internet that I thought was very good. It reads, I say black lives matter because all didn't cover black when they said all men are created equal. I say black lives matter because all didn't cover black when they said with liberty and justice for all. I say black lives matter because they're still struggling with the definition of all. And this one, our troops are out of Afghanistan. We're not sending the usual billions to our Afghan government. So why is the Pentagon budget increasing? Why is it going up 37 billion more than Trump's gargantuan defense spending? BBB, does it mean build bombs better? And if you see this program before the afternoon of November 20th, consider going to hear the Schaefer Lecture online Go to pepeace.org for details. The lecture is called The Revolution Will Be Plant-Based and it will be given by Christopher Sebastian. That's our program for today. See you next week at this time. I'm Stanley Heller for The Struggle.